Our output from the full factorial analysis of variance will include all the terms that we looked at when we developed the mathematical model that underlies the full factorial analysis. Let's start with the intercept of the model. This is y bar dot dot dot, the grand mean across everybody. Our next term is the a1, that is the offset associated with Gilman Drive. Notice we don't have a2 listed in our parameter estimates table. That term is actually redundant. Remember, we only have two levels of route, so if we know a1, we already know the value of a2. Jump isn't modeling that second term because it already knows it by definition. We have our next term, b1, that is, the offset for time of day at 8 a.m. Again, notice that jump doesn't list the b2 because we already know it by definition. It'll be negative 15.7625. Finally, we have the ab11 term the first offset for the interaction terms. Remember, when we developed the model, we saw that all of those AB terms were really the same. Some were negative and some were positive, but they filled out a structure, a structure that had only one degree of freedom. So again, Jump isn't going to estimate terms that it doesn't need. It will only use up the degrees of freedom it has to in order to estimate the mathematical model we're using to form the full factorial. Next, look at the effect test section. When we looked at the one-way analysis of variance and used fit model, we saw that the effect test section was redundant to the analysis of variance table. In a full factorial analysis, we'll want to look at this effect test section specifically. Notice that we have the sums of squares for each factor and interaction listed separately here. So we have the effects for route, time of day, and route by time of day separately listed in this section. For each of those, we also have the observed f values for each factor and interaction, and the p values for the main effect of factor A, factor B, and the p value for the interaction. In just a moment, we'll step through interpreting these p values and looking at the effects we have in our output, but notice now we have evidence for a main effect of route. p is less than our standard 0.05. Similarly, we have a main effect for time of day. Our p is also less than 0.05, although just barely so. We also have evidence for an interaction. That is, we have evidence that whatever effect there is for route depends on, statistically, the time of day. Or said differently, whatever effect we have for time of day depends on, statistically, the route we're taking. Now turn your attention to the analysis of variance table. The analysis of variance table here is the omnibus analysis of variance, testing all the terms at once versus a model where we're only predicting the mean for each person. First, the sums of squares total. This is the total variation in y if we were to use distribution and just look at the time to campus column alone. Next, we have the sums of squares for error. This is the total amount of error remaining after we fit each of the different effects. This is how we would find our mean square for error, the remaining variance associated with the individuals or the observations around their group mean. Next, we have the sums of squares for model. Notice the model here has three degrees of freedom. We needed three parameters to represent the route, time of day, and route by time of day effects. These model sums of squares are the entire predictability or the entire amount of sums of squares explained by those factors combined. These yield the mean square for the model. That is, the sums of squares for the model divided by three. And finally, the mean square for the model over the mean square for error is the p-value for testing our entire model. This is, in fact, a general linear test. This is a test of the biggest model, that is, our entire structure, versus fitting just the mean of everybody for each person. That is, does our entire model, with all the effects we've specified, route, time, and the route by time interaction, do those, overall, fit better than we would expect a model would by chance? Now, I'll pause for a second and say that this analysis of variance table is typically of less use for us than the effect test section. In fact, if we're fitting a factorial analysis of variance, we'll often be most interested in the effects of each of our factors separately. Although it's sometimes interesting to know if the overall model, with everything, fits better than chance, it's usually more important for us to localize the effects to a particular source. So often, we'll want to know, is there a main effect of route or time of day, and is there some interaction? So typically, when you fit your full factorial analysis of variance, you'll even want to hide the parameter estimates and analysis of variance section and look specifically at the effect test section. 
And that's my typical recommendation. When you fit these models, start off looking at just this, the effect test section.